All right, everybody. Um, you're going to just see uh, the background here, the overlay, because my camera's not working. So I just want you to know that you're going to hear my lovely voice and nothing else. Um, and this is pre recorded, just so you know. And uh, we're going to talk about. Because it's um, July 4th weekend, I wanted to talk about something that fit in with that, um, that theme. So I wanted to talk about independence from sin. So let's start with a quick word of prayer. Father God, I ask that you touch the hearts of those that are here, Lord. And I ask that you help them to want to grow closer to you and to do your work, Lord, that you've given each and every one of us to do, Lord. Help us in our in our efforts, Lord, to reach those around us and to grow your kingdom in any way that we can, Lord. Amen. So we're going to start by looking at Romans 6, verses 15 to 23. This is about being a slave to righteousness. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed from the heart that from that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you present, presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of unlawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit of holiness at the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The uh, phrase, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? It brings me back to the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Joy, love, peace, long-suffering, all of those. But the greatest of these is what? The greatest of these is love. So, hopefully, hopefully, when that last day comes and we're all, all of us are risen out of the grave, hopefully I can look over and I can see members of my church, members of my family, and those friends around me who are important to me. I'm going to look at Romans 7, 14 through 22. Paul is giving us some good words about what it means to be free from sin. So we're looking now at Romans 7, 14 through 22. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing dw good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. 
For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Before we come to God, all of those things that we think are fun, you know, being out, listening to loud music, going to the bars, living that quote unquote rock and roll lifestyle. It solely starts not to appeal to us anymore because that's not who we are. God has reached into our lives and he saved us. He has shown us that this is the path. And all of a sudden, those things that were that were high on our list of priorities, they're not important at all. And it's because we are being saved from sin. We are being pulled towards the light. I sometimes say that we have to come kicking and screaming to the light. And that's only because the old man that's in us wants desperately to overcome. But God loves us, and he never stops pulling us towards him. And once we become slaves to God, the old things don't look as, as good as they used to. There is, there is no more any attraction in going to the nightclubs. There is no more attraction in being out until two o'clock in the morning, drinking until you can barely stand up. John 8, 23 and 24, and then 31 to 36. John 8, verses 23 and 24. And he, Jesus, said to them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Do you want to die in your sins? We can be pulled out of that. And that's what he was offering them right there. Verses 31 to 36. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Do you want to be free? Is that burning in your heart for you to be free? I know I do. And I know that the feeling I get when I see people that I used to know still living the same way kind of breaks my heart because they don't seem to be really interested in anything else. It's having a good time. It's work. It's family. It's some other things too. But it doesn't really, it doesn't really satisfy the same way that God does. God opens up our hearts and makes us care about other people. And that's another sign that we're slaves of God and slaves of righteousness. We're not doing the same thing and we're not thinking about the same thing. Someone who comes to God who continually cheats on his wife, 
after accepting God in his heart, is going to struggle to give up that sin. But he will give up that sin through God. And God wants us to know how to do it right away. The problem is that we fight. And we sometimes are pulled kicking and screaming. And it's not as easy as some people say. Some people say that we are going to... Um, be instantly changed overnight. And while I agree that we are instantly changed, we still have to stop fighting. We have to put up against God our will, and we have to realize that we're not as strong as God. And the only way that we can overcome any sin, whether it's sexual or mental or physical or anything, is to accept God and to learn how to give it to him. Because sometimes you think you've made victory over a sin. And all of a sudden, you fall again. Romans 13. 10 to 13. 10 to 14. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, knowing the time that now is, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Hallelujah. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. I hope you notice that. There are some things in there that I really want to go back and I want to focus on. In verse 11, it says that now... It is high time to awake out of sleep. That's a very carefully chosen word because we know that Lazarus was asleep. And when was Lazarus asleep? When he was in the tomb and dead. So look at it this way. What it's really saying is, and do this, knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of your death. For now our salvation is near than when we first believed. Amen. Every day we're with God is a step closer we come to being like him. We can put down our Bibles and convince ourselves that we're okay today. But when we don't spend time in the Bible, when we don't spend time thinking about God, when we don't spend time reinforcing all of those messages that God has for us, and we put down the Bible and we go on with our day, I know from personal experience that I have an awful day. My day is not as strong and it's not as edifying as I need it to be. I can sit here and I can think that I'm doing well. But after f three or four days, I start to notice the change in me. And I really need to get back to it when I get to that point. So praise the Lord. He's always willing to accept us back. And we have to be willing to pray like David did. We have to be willing to empty our hearts and, and our minds and our regrets and all of our sins and offer them up to God. As strange as it is, he wants them. Because if he has them, we no longer have them. I want to go to Mark 5. Verses 5 to 10, and then we're going to look at 18 and 20 because 
Verses 18 and 20 put it into a rather nice So we're going to get to Mark 5, 5 to 10 first. And always, night, we're talking about the demoniac here. Um, he, everyone knows that he is, everyone in the town knows him because he's been shouting and making noise and they can't even hold him with chains because he just busts out of them. So rather than going near him, they just avoid him. And verse 5 starts, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and he worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said, for Jesus said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your na name? And he said, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. Now verses 18 through 20 are after Jesus has healed him, and he's back in his right mind, and he's calm. Verse 18, And when Jesus got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged with him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends. And tell them what great things the Lord has done to you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. I'm going to go back and look at Zechariah 7. Verses 4 to 7. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Say to all the people of the land and to the priests, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months during these seventy years, did you really fast for me? For me. When you eat and drink, when you eat and when you drink, do you not eat and drink for yourselves? Should you not have obeyed the words which the Lord proclaimed to the former prophets when Jerusalem and the cities around it were inhabited and prosperous and the south and the lowland were inhabited? If we don't know when to do something, if we don't know what to do, but we follow the knowledge that we have, that we have learned from the Bible, that we've learned from sermons online, that we have learned from people who come who have come before us. We should know that to obey God is better than sacrifice. We should know that anything that we do in an attempt to obey God, is going to change us in a more positive way and draw us closer to him. I want to be a slave to God. I don't want to be tangled down in all these sins and all these, in all of the world. What I want to be is someone that stands out. And I want people to be able to look at me in the last days and go, wait, wait, wait. I know these Christians are nuts, but Bruce, 
I went to school with him. And I know what he's like now compared to what he was like then. And I want to be one of the people that represents God so much that people will not believe the bad things that are said about me. And I want the same thing for you. I want you to be able to sit down during those bad times, during the last days when things are really ramping up and when things are starting to happen. And I want people to go, well, I know those people who keep Saturday. I know they're saying they're doing the, these awful things. But I know Bruce and Cruz Maria. And I know they wouldn't do anything if it wasn't if it wasn't. What the God, if, if it wasn't what God said. I know the same thing about Barbara. I know the same about Pastor Pearson. I want you to be free. Because when you're free, you want to make other people free. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to do all things that I have taught you. Amen. I will see you next week, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. God bless you.